Uh, Dossie boy, what's got you feeling a bit under the weather, mate? A couple of things, Rog. Had a Bucks party on the weekend, and I dotted the eyes across the tees mm. a little bit too hard. Um, I think I was drowning my sorrows after the D's on Friday night. I cannot believe they went out in straight sets. I can't believe we lost to Brisbane. Um, and for me, it was like, pre- like if we had made a prelim and got bundled out, that was still a pass mark. For me, it's very hard to go back to back. It's very hard to back up. But to not even make a prelim, I reckon it's a bit of an F for the season. So I'm a bit gutted. How long do you reckon it'll take you to get over this one? Um... Full pre-season, not till you get a W round one next year. No, I think I, I think I was over this because we won the grand final last year. Right. So I feel like that sort of eradicated two years worth of sadness. So I'm, I'm a little bit down, I'm a little bit frustrated, but it doesn't sting like it used to. The old, um, the old failed years and failed seasons. Yeah, oh, mate. Well, it's been one of the all-time weekends. The mighty Banyol Bears, the 19s won the flag and the seniors won the flag. Unfortunately, my reserves weren't quite good enough on the prelim day to make it through to the big dance, but Jay, did we celebrate in fashion on Saturday night? And if you look here, it will actually oh. say we've got another special guest coming in. Have a look. He's walking down the door now. And here he is. Freddie Mercury hey. say, no, we have got our man Monday today. So, Dale! How you finding it, like the TV stuff now? Like, just because I was noticed on the weekend, I was watching Seven for like half an hour leading to the footy. Yeah. So you had to like, you were there, you did your story. Yeah. And you go like, all right, Beth, yeah, da, 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 in, and then you had to like do it again in like 15 minutes. Yeah. So you got to like have a different angle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did my back years ago in under 19s footy. I had like a slightly pinched disc, like oh, a, really? a pinched nerve, like yeah, the right. disc was slightly out. And I bumped into Shane Crawford down at Torquay. And I just started complaining to him. Like, I was just chatting to him. He's like, oh, what's going on, mate? Because I was like a, a fan. And I'm like, oh, my, you know, my back's cooked. And he was like, yeah, Pilates. He's like, go yeah. on. I used to have massive back issues and Pilates is yeah. the go. Yeah, it is, mate. Oh, it's fixed my back for sure. Um, we've got no problems with it now, so. There you go. Yeah. Might have to tuck in. Yeah. yeah. How, how'd you find the pod? How's the mate, experience on the potty? It's great. I love what you guys are doing. <laughs> love it. Is, that, is this your first time on a podcast or have you been on? Uh... I've, no, I've been on a couple. Um, yeah. But yeah, nothing set up like this. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty cool. Mate, fantastic. Um, looking forward to next season? Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm, mate, it's can't wait to get started. on next week. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I'll get on next week. <laughs> have you got yourself, well, you would have, I presume, but have you got yourself another contract for, like, because when you sign a mid season, it's only for that mid season? Yeah, no, so I negotiated, I got 18 months, so. Oh, fuck uh, yeah. And with that, well done. You ripper. <laughs> I You're hope rip, that man. the chat with Mitch has cheered you up from your disastrous week because it was an absolute legend to uh, speak to. I feel like we got plenty of insight. But if there was something to bring you back crashing down to earth, uh, it's old poor mate Maxi Gorn out the front here. For the people watching on the podcast will see the usual prop of Maxi Gorn, the bobblehead, has been shattered into a million bits. Uh, what has happened there, McDonald? I don't know. We might have to do a bit of Blue's Clues and um, get to the bottom of it because Max has been... Uh, take it out. Yeah, here the goes all right. Set. Um, no, I don't know. I think these from the Toronto news agents are a little bit not cheap. They weren't cheap, but they're a little bit sort of fragile. And uh, he's clearly been broken. That better not be a sign yeah. of things to come this Friday night against the Lions. Uh, uh, you'd hate if it's voodoo, voodoo doll style, and you come into the second quarter and he's lost both his feet, <laughs> broken, snapped both his ankles off. Then we will be in strife. Well, I'm touching all sorts of wood um, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well. If the week couldn't get any worse, Luke Duncan Jackson has announced <clears throat> that he is off to WA. He hasn't nominated a club, which has helped the D's a little bit with their bargaining, but super disappointing. I guess on one hand it stings a little bit less because <laughs> we won a flag with him, and that's something that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. But on the other hand, it feels like he's leaving before we really got the best of him so yeah it's sort of like I do understand it and I am accepting of it but it is a little bit premature for mine if he had sort of done the danger field and got to I think danger stuck around that Patrick Dangerfield was was always coming back to Geelong um but he sort of stuck around for that fifth sixth year and gave him a hundred maybe even 150 games um so I sort of respect when players can tough out that amount of time and I know everything's different like I know every situation is different but um 
yeah, it's a bit of a shame we couldn't have his services for that amount of time. And I find it funny how the narrative has flipped in the last few days. Like, Luke Jackson is a phenomenon. And I don't think I'm overselling that. Um, I don't think I've seen a Ruckman do what he's done in their first couple of years. He could be our number one Ruckman. And he could be one of it. I reckon he could be our number one forward if he just stayed as a forward. He does a little bit of both, so you don't get the best of either. But that's only because he's in his first three development years. Like We, we haven't seen a Ruckman sort of be this comfortable at AFL level in their first three years since at least like a Brody Grundy. And I can't think of anyone else, to be honest. Um, so it's funny how we can all acknowledge that and go, yeah, Luke Jackson, he is going to be a superb talent. But the minute he decides to leave, and apparently there's big money involved that's being offered to him, the Australian tall poppy in us go, no, nah, well, he's shit anyway. And it's, it's just bizarre. You go six months back, and it's Luke Jackson, you know, he's in the top five or six ruckman in the comp, and he's 20. Six months later, it's, nay shit, because he's getting off with this much money. And I just think that is Australian tall poppy syndrome to a T. Um, there is a risk offering him that big of a deal. There is a risk. Um, yeah, there's a risk with anyone. And I know that this deal is all sort of based on his upside. But geez, I'd be surprised if you don't get like sort of one or two Nick Nat style years out of him at least. Um, he's so talented. He's so athletic, and he can rip a game to shreds in minutes, which we've seen before. Um, so, yeah, he's one of the. He's probably the best ruckman that I've seen in their first one to three years at Melbourne. We we usually have some some sort of list cloggers, your Jack Pencil Spencer, um, your, your Jack your Jack Fitzy Fitzpatrick, who who will stay on the list and and then show some signs at twenty six, twenty seven, um, before you know ultimately getting delisted. So. That's chalk and cheese compared to what we've witnessed from Luke Jackson in his first two or three years. You know, so young. And that's why I just find it so funny. I think it is a bit of tall poppy syndrome where Mark Robinson starts going off about him. You know, he's not that good of a forward. He's not that good of a ruckman. We're not saying this unless he's potentially getting traded. Like, if he's just this bloke who signed a nice little deal at Melbourne, we're not trying to pull him down. We're only trying to pull him down now because... Of the potential deal that he's getting so um i absolutely love dogger jackson i wish he stuck around for longer i feel like if we had to pinch the flag this year it would have just been like shake your hands um and just accept it but because we fell short this year it leaves a bit of a sour taste in our mouths but um, i certainly won't be booing the big dogger and i'm frustrated that i'm going to see him sit on maxi gorn's head for the next couple of years um but all the talk is potentially Grundy, and that would be a funny sort of side story if that does come true. Um, but yeah, I'm still flat. I'm still so flat from the other night.